number one topic i want to get into something that's very very close to my heart of course uh, i'm assuming that everything opens up as need be um is that i want to advocate for sasha lord the nighttime advisor for manchester to get a knighthood of some sort when everything is settled and all the dust uh you know when the dust is settled and uh you know and the empty pints of beer glasses have been placed on the table and slotted into the washing machine and people are trotting back home and getting their kebab when everything is sorted and everyone's had a really good time and they've kind of got all the going out system they've got they've got the kind of going out uh, thing out of their system and people have sobered up and they want to kind of look at who kind of you know had a positive impact during this whole covid lockdown supporting small businesses supporting you know industries and especially or supporting businesses especially in the hospitality sector Sasha Lord is definitely somebody that um that definitely deserves some recognition and some acknowledgement from the government you know whatever it may be knighthood a position something a, a bump in raise whatever it may be he definitely deserves it because he's been fighting a good fight so much so that he's kind of really shown up um amy lammy the supposed nighttime advisor we have here in london who for what i can see so far has done pretty much jack shit instead of giving those like awkward smile things that she does to the camera like I don't, I don't know what else she's actually done, but Sasha Lord is basically proving what a nighttime uh, advisor is meant to be doing. And again, all of this stuff that Sasha Lord has been doing in terms of advocating for hospitality industry has been uh, mostly focused on the entire hospitality industry across the, the whole UK, not just specifically for Greater Manchester, where he resides and where he's from. No, he's looking after everybody. And this really selfless and amazing work has not gotten a notice from me. So this is a quote from him. Um, just the other day, it says, on the back of yesterday's news in getting a substantial meal in a high court ruling, we are back again. Hospitality should open at the same time as non-essential retail on the 12th of April. We are more regulated, licensed and put more measures, uh, safety measures, I guess, in place. And this is obviously uh, relating to the government mandate that has um, laid out in the roadmap where essentially non-essential retail, you know, re um, clothing stores and whatnot will open before pubs and bars are allowed to have people sitting indoors and drinking and eating which is obviously batshit crazy it makes no complete sense in the beginning of lockdown especially he was very skeptical about the science and the data that was being used to justify bars and pubs closing there was a lot of data coming out showing that you know i think when i remember the height even of the virus i think only five percent of cases were accounted for hospitality industry right five percent it makes sense and if you've ever been to especially if you live in the uk if you've been to a pub or a bar in london or in the uk mostly um during lockdown or during covid actually times you would have known that most of these places put up you know crazy amounts of um, safety measures to ensure that the patrons were safe because you know they were losing money day in day out so whatever money they could get back from however many people were coming in they would do it so they were going above and beyond to make sure that happened some places were even doing it out of their own pocket right they weren't supplied with any ppe nothing so they did all that needed to be done and still the government went out of their way to um you know shutter that entire industry and ruin people's lives and careers like loads of madness anyway that's what was one of the bridge now we've moved on but such lord was definitely one of the main people that you know he was definitely the main people because he ended up taking the government to court and he basically was able to win um over the ruling that kind of advised that we you know when pubs reopened they needed to have a substantial meal to justify people sitting indoors really batshit crazy shit and now he's kind of pushing forward again and not taking his foot off the pedal and pushing for hospitality industry to open on the 12th of april alongside all northern central retail now it's a bit of a stretch goal it's probably a bit of a long shot might not probably it probably no, it might not happen it's unlikely to happen but still the pressure is needed to be put onto the government in order to kind of justify every single thing that they're doing because what we can't be doing is just letting them do it's just letting them this it's letting them kind of run ragged and just do what they want because we've seen what happened prior right last year especially during the peak that like the government didn't have a clue right so one moment it was softly softly hands off next moment it's draconian laws the next moment it's a five-day break in between the next moment it isn't like really loads of differing right loads of dilly dallying and that's probably one of um one of uh boris johnson's shortcomings in that regard right when he does take a decision it always comes weeks if not days after it should have been done prior um without the clarity loads of leaks to the media just loads of annoying stuff so this is Sasha Lord talking about it on the times radio play it for you now you know they are licensed they are regulated so why is it right that's on the 12th of april 
you can drive into into uh, the city centre, go in and out of all the shops where there are hardly any measures whatsoever. You can go and have your hair cut. You can you can fly into Sainsbury's, buy as much alcohol as you want, um, but you cannot stop and sit down and eat a sandwich in somewhere like Perez. It does not make any sense to me. So exactly. that is the next challenge. And what we're saying is, look, we put more measures in place than non-essential retail. We are licensed. We are regulated. So allow us to open up. It's exactly the same time on the 12th of April and not five weeks down the line because we don't think there is any evidence whatsoever. Definitely agree with the guy. And then um, he writ this or he put together this really good article as well, courtesy of The Independent, I'm going to say. I'm going to get it up on your screen for you as well to check out. So this is called, um, the I took the government to court over its COVID restrictions on pubs. This is why, from Sasha Lord, it says, Today we announce a landmark victory in um, the Atlanta victory for the hospitality industry, and one I'm personally very proud of. As we wound up our court case following the judgment um, that the substantial mill restriction imposed on wet lead pubs was arguably discriminatory towards certain sects of society. As such, this ruling made February 5th forced the government to U-turn on restrictions in their roadmap announcement last week. When we kicked off our legal case um, last year, we wanted to shine a light on the unfairness of the restrictions on the sector and discuss the legality around forcing wet lead pubs to remain shut while those which um, serve food can reopen. As a nighttime economy advisor for Greater Manchester, I know that venues across our region serve a multitude of communities, all different in our in our own ways, that wet-led pubs and social clubs in particular hold a significant place in building these communities, especially within the, our most uh, deprived areas. In Manchester alone, there are 1,809 wet lead pubs and bars which were not allowed to reopen when the region moved into tier 3 in December. Yeah, I remember that, man. That was such a catastrophe. And the mill restriction was imposed, condemning them to the almost uncertain administration and bankruptcy. Um, the decision to punish these venues while keeping um, others open was a blow to our northern culture. And if I remember correctly, one of Matt Hancock's friend's districts um, was allowed to move into tier 2 and have their places open, even though they had the same numbers as Manchester there's some real scummy stuff happening hopefully people remember this when the next elections come up right don't don't forget all these sort of things um the decision to punish the venues da, da, da. the measures clearly discriminated against unfairly impacted on the poorest and most disadvantaged in our region as oliver wright the partner of the law firm jw jmw solicitors who represented me said this case highlighted the lack of real scientific evidence to support the government's policy and their failure to understand that this discriminatory effects on non-white and bam E communities. Um, and although uh, many of these venues have suffered and unfortunately many have succumbed to the financial pressures of COVID, I am personally pleased with the judgments made in our case. We have given hope to those clinging on, not just from the businesses, but the customers most affected as we head towards the end of the crisis. While the safety of our residents across the region is our utmost priority, it is my role to ensure that there is ongoing support for all those who are suffering, whether it be financially or on a societal point of view. As such, our job is not done and will continue to work with those most affected across the nighttime economy, hospitality sector to ensure all measures imposed on the industry going forward are fair to everyone absolutely amazing we have seen um now that the measures which are not based on scientific data can be questioned and my legal team and i are already in discussions regarding the lack of evidence to justify the delay of reopening the indoor vitality compared to non-essential retail um as the people who know the sector best we urge the government again to work with us on decisions and plan to reinvest these kinds of u-turns and monitor toll taken on the business owner just by making a living so, sorry to, to prevent these kinds of u-turns and mental toll taken on the living da, 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 and we're all working in the same end goal to help as many businesses survive the pandemic as possible now there's a real opportunity to move forward such so, a lot of that time economy um, advisor for Grange Manchester and co-founder of Park Life and the Warehouse Project. Sasha Lord will donate all the court cases recovered from the secretary evenly between Hospitality Action and Greater Manchester Mayor's Charity. How amazing, man. The guy deserves a flipping knighthood, honestly, for, for real. And again, look at the flipping, um, the 
the difference in approach between him and Amy Lamy. This is such an embarrassment too, right? Um, what is great is Greater Manchester, UK's city, the UK's second most popular, most populated city, I think maybe. This should be something Amy Lamy should be doing, right? She should be leading this forward. Um, obviously, it would be a great way to kind of mend the North-South divide, all this kind of stuff. But again, there she is twiddling her thumbs, resting on her laurels, collecting a check, doing absolutely jack shit. Um, and then kind of such a lord kind of stole the front and did all the lord's work and kind of helped out everybody going forward so definitely keep that in mind during the next elections i really wonder anyway going forward like what how long is amy lamy meant to be in power in her position she's felt like she's had that job forever is that i'm assuming that job is tied in directly with sadiq khan and him being obviously the mayor um of london and he obviously is the one that hired her so i'm assuming if we get another mayor she'd have to vacate her position right i'm assuming so because she's been collecting a check for doing absolutely jack shit. She took credit for the whole fabric thing, which I don't really think had anything to do with her whatsoever. It probably has to do more with the public outcry. But so far, she's done pretty much nothing to help or mend the nighttime economy and to support some of our, you know, um, you know uh, underground uh, places that are basically being affected negatively, you know, with the changes of the economy. She's done really nothing. She's really, really, really terrible. And again, I, I, not to be one of those guys, but like, I've always had a bit of a funny, I, I never really understood why somebody of her background, you know, was the person that was leading the charge in terms of looking after that time economy, especially when you consider the amount of the the fertile ground we have in london we have so many people involved in you know entertainment venues nightlife whatever it may be hospitality experts absolute killers in their field who could have done that job with their eyes closed and they weren't given it instead we gave it to this woman who like ugh, i don't know what is she a politician first is she really a nighttime advocate like what is she um is she american like the american thing is odd as well like well i'm assuming she's got a british citizenship which is why she's got a position but still it's so bizarre isn't it we just only london could do something like that and it's somebody that's not even from here who's not you know local from the area actually has roots in this place knows what it's about is the one that's leading the charts nighttime coming it's just I, I don't know i find it odd i find it odd but hey what do i 